Hey, what's going on? It's Marcus and just wanted to pop in here and talk about a question that I was receiving yesterday. And by the way, I know that I just called myself Marcus. Um, I noticed on my YouTube channel, it says Marcus anyway, so it's my full name. Might as well just go with that. And uh, it was mostly because I had the Mark Chino pseudonym and uh, it's actually attached to my Google account as well. So when I was using Google Docs or when I was using Google Drive, the people at work were getting confused. <laughs> um, so I just switched it to Marcus. So feel free to, uh, now we're on first name basis. But what I want to talk about today is basically how many YouTube videos I watch. Because this came up yesterday and someone was asking me, okay, well, you know, how many, how much YouTube do you actually watch? And I thought about it and it's some, something, I, a question I really think about too much, but I realized that I typically, in spite of the fact that I post a good number of videos, typically only watch maybe one to two hours a week. So usually one to two hours a week on Saturday or Sunday and you know, for example, yesterday I was researching some different laptops because I'm looking into potentially buying another laptop to replace the one I have. Um, and that was pretty much it. And also I was watching this interview with one of my friends was being interviewed and same thing was la with last week, one of my friends was being interviewed and I just watched that and that was it. Um, so for the most part, I don't really browse around like I used to. And I'm not saying it's a bad or a good thing. It's just how things are now. Uh, usually Monday through Friday, I will wake up, I will go work out and go through my morning routine, come back. Um, and then I'll go to the office and then just be there during the day. And I come back and I might read or work on something. And then also just a lot of my free time is spent reaching out to people. And sometimes just connected with someone that I haven't talked to in a long time. And I actually find that that's way more energizing than coming back home and watching a, a YouTube video, for example. And this is, once again, this is why I'm never, I don't think I'm ever going to become like a YouTube influencer or anything like that. Uh, just because I'm literally saying that I don't spend that much time on YouTube. So it's kind of ironic. Um, but anyway, so, so that's essentially what I do during the weekdays and uh, during the weekends, sometimes I do spend some time on YouTube, um, but for the most part, I am talking to people just because I find that, you know, it's interesting because I used to be the biggest introvert growing up and, you know, I was voted quite as kid in school and middle school and throughout high school, people were kind of like, does, does Marcus even talk? And uh, yeah, I was kind of like that through most of my life. And into my early 20s. And it wasn't really until my early to mid 20s where I started to open up a little bit more. And I wouldn't say that I really felt that comfortable. I mean, sometimes I still feel a bit awkward or uncomfortable in social situations, but for the most part, I'm just, you know, I feel more open and free. And I think it's come from a place of just letting go of judgment, but especially self-judgment. Because I think a lot of times that resistance that comes up when we're in a social situation can come from a place of feeling like we're being judged. But when you really think about it, where is that judgment coming from? Is it coming from the other person or is it coming from ourselves? Sometimes it's the own internal pressure that we put on ourselves thinking that the other person is judging us. And so it took me, I talked about this before, but spending nine days alone. And this was actually separate from my Vipassana meditation retreat. I did this kind of on my own where I spent nine days alone in isolation, had a journal with me and would just write things out and would just journal my feelings and my thoughts. And, you know, first few days I was very self-loathing in the sense that I would talk a lot about reasons why I hated myself at the time. Uh, I just felt honestly, kind of like a failure in certain areas of my life at the time. And when you really think about it, sometimes that can come up for all of us. We can all feel like we're unworthy or we're not enough. 
in whatever area of our life it is during that season of our life. So at one point for me, it was health. Another point it was dating. Another point it was financial. But that can come up for all of us. And it wasn't until I took that time to work through these feelings and allow them to come up. And the only reason why they were allowed to come up was because I realized, man, I spend a lot of time on technology. I spend most of my time watching YouTube videos or consuming content or browsing on social media. And so when I finally gave myself that space in isolation without technology for nine days, day two or three, so usually the first couple of days, my mind is thinking about things I have to do. It's like coming up with different to-dos. And I was actually watching an interview with Mike Posner. He was on Impact Theory with Tom Bilyeu, and he was talking about his Vipassana meditation experience. And he was talking about how during that time, his brain was coming up with random tasks for him to do, even though in Vipassana, you're not really having to do anything. You really can just be there and meditate. But his brain was thinking about, oh, I have to organize the rocks or I have to do this or I have to do that. And that's kind of like the natural human inclination is we're very goal driven and we think of tasks when we have nothing to do. But then what ends up happening is over time, then your mind starts to settle down because it's used to being overstimulated. But in that tranquility, in that space, we allow ourselves to take a step back, zoom out and settle down. And then you have a greater sense of peace and I suppose lucidity and being more placid and tranquil. And that allows things to come up though. Things that maybe you've been stuffing down for a long time. And I know I've, I've had this conversation with some people on the weekends about their Vipassana because I've, I've spoken with some people who have also done Vipassana and they've talked about how man, there's also things that I didn't even remember that were coming up. And that happened for me too, where I was like, I didn't even remember that time in elementary school or kindergarten when this happened, but all these memories just started to resurface. And what I think my theory on what happened in that moment is that I've been leaving those memories unprocessed in my subconscious all these years. And because it's just been layered on, every single day throughout all these years of think about it. We're always on the go. We tend to be always on the go. Like we have to go to school, we have to go to work, we have to go work out, we have to do this, we have to do that, see this person, watch this video, take this course, do this, do that. When do we ever have a time to just sit back and process all of that? And so what I realized for myself is when I had that space, my mind started to race with all that mental chatter. Even when I was just alone in isolation, it was just overstimulated. And I was, I suppose, finally processing these things that I had never taken the time to process. And when I went through that, it allowed me to have these emotions come up to the surface that I'd never really experienced of that self-loathing, that self-hatred, feeling like I'm not worthy, like I'm worthless, like I'm not enough, things like that, right? Really deep stuff. And I realized that a lot of it was, I was just being really hard on myself and just allowing yourself to forgive yourself and allowing that judgment to fall away can be a powerful thing. Now, I know we just went very deep there, and that was a very intense story, but wrapping this all the way back around to how many YouTube videos I watch per day, what I came to realize through that experience is that I became more in touch with my own voice. I became more in touch with my intuition. And so I didn't feel that same compulsion that I used to about having to jam new information in my head to try to quiet those voices. But in actuality, are you really quieting those voices? Or are you just inserting more voices to comfort yourself? Because when you really think about it, a lot of times, the reason why we even watch so many YouTube videos is because it's kind of like a form of escape from our current reality. Because when you think about it, a lot of times when we're watching these videos, we're alone in a room with a computer, with no one around. And humans oftentimes will crave or desire that social interaction 
And so we can replace that by listening to a YouTube video or watching a YouTube video. And it feels like we're interacting with someone because the subconscious feels that way. It's comforting for us. And we feel like number one, we're socially or emotionally comforted by that experience. Or number two, that we are growing or learning. But in actuality, are we doing either of those things? So first of all, are we actually interacting with someone? And most likely if you're just watching or consuming a video, you're not really interacting with the person. And so that's why I found more energy through being able to reach out to people and talk with people, either through messenger or on a phone call or just talking with someone, actually connecting with someone. And I've actually learned a lot from that, those experiences, just even speaking with whoever it is, because I think that every single person has their own intrinsic self-worth. Because sometimes we rank, we have this tendency to rank people, you know, oh, this person's a 10, this person is a seven, this person is this, based on their financial status, based on their dating life, based on their health. But when I allowed that self-judgment to fall away, that rating system for myself also kind of fell away where I didn't really see anyone as above or below anyone else, I realized that we're all connected and we can share with others. And granted, sometimes you don't want to share the same space as someone else because energetically you're not in alignment. And I recognize that too. Sometimes I'm just feeling good. Someone, you know, is let's say just misaligned and um, I'm not saying that in a, in a way that's disparaging towards them. What I mean is just sometimes you're, you're not wanting to share the same space with someone else. I'm sure you know what I mean, right? You're just, there's something that's disconnecting with the other person. That being said, what I found is that being able to connect with others is one way. And then let me talk about the second thing too that I mentioned is, are you actually learning by watching these videos or consuming content? And what I invite you to consider is, what is the difference between learning and understanding through experience? Tony Robbins says, I know I quote Tony all the time, but he has some great quotes. And he says that the world is drowning in knowledge, but starving for wisdom. The world is drowning in knowledge, but starving for wisdom. And when you really unpack that and think about it, basically what that means is, yeah, we can hop on YouTube, or we can hop on social media, or we can hop on any sources of information these days and get a ton of information. But how much of that is actually wisdom? Because wisdom is sharpened through experience. Wisdom is essentially taking that information and putting it through a filter of your own experience and be able to say, this is actually something that resonates with me. And I've tested it for myself. And it is something that works for me. And this is something that doesn't really work for me. Maybe it worked for the other person, but I'm just gonna set this aside and just stick with this thing and maybe move on to the next thing. That's the ability to be wise. Whereas, you know, anyone can really consume knowledge. So once again, what I invite you to consider is where is that for you? And you know, you could even think about how many videos you watch per day or how many hours you spend consuming content per day. And it's not even something to make you feel bad. It's really just a point of awareness. Sometimes we have to step on the scale to realize how much we weigh. And some people are totally fine with how much they weigh. And that's great. If they feel truly good about it, that's great. But if there's some sort of sense of shame or guilt around it, then think about where's that coming from? Why do you feel that? Because also there's no reason to feel bad about it. And sometimes that's why people get into self-help in the first place is that they start to feel bad about these things and they start to beat themselves up over it. And actually that can hinder the progress that you're making because what ends up happening is, yeah, you, you invest in a course, you buy this course from this guru who is an expert in this area and then you consume all their content and you take on all their beliefs and you make some transformations here and there. But then you literally take on all their beliefs to the point where you don't even know if you're your own person anymore. And you don't know what you believe in and you're just taking on someone else's values. So that's why I think it's important to also take a step back 
and think about, okay, well, let me just spend some time with myself so I can allow all these things to come to the surface and I can work through those things and I can gain some clarity on my values and what I want. And that way, when I'm searching for resources to help me out along the way, I don't have to take on all the beliefs of this person I'm learning from, which is a tendency that happens to everyone. It happened to me at one point. It's happened to me multiple times. I see this person I really like up, look up to. I start talking like them. I start dressing like them. I start doing things like them. I start eating the same foods, drinking the same drinks, everything. I just start copying them. But then I realize, am I, who am I being? Am I being myself? Am I being this person? Who am I? Right? It wasn't until I realized this much later that once I spent some time with myself and I realized these are my values, this is what I'm looking for. Here's clarity on my vision. And I can now go through that process of realizing, okay, well, maybe I don't want to totally just copy this person, but I can at least model certain parts of what they do so I can essentially see if those things work for me. And if they do, then I can add that into my repertoire and be able to progress in that area of my life. So it's something to think about. Um, and essentially that's pretty much it for now. But, you know, in case you're wondering how much YouTube content I actually consume, it's honestly not that much anymore. Uh, it's not because the content out there is bad or anything like that. It's simply because I just feel like I have clarity on my own vision, my own voice. And, um, and yeah, I, I still go on YouTube. Like sometimes I, it's okay to escape every once in a while as well. It's like, all right, well, you know, I just feel like watching one or two videos today. I'll just hop on and watch those things. And one other thing I was going to mention, maybe I'll make this in a separate video is I use an extension and basically the extension removes recommended videos and also removes comments. So basically for me, YouTube is essentially a search engine where you're just entering in the video that you're looking for and you're watching that. And there's literally nothing on my YouTube newsfeed or my suggested videos. All of that is removed. Um, it's literally just the, the video itself. And so that extension allows me to just do that so that I don't have to you know, pick around or get distracted by anything. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I want to share and we'll talk soon.